Hi. Good morning. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Um, so before we start this morning, I wanted to just say a few words and then uh, begin this morning with uh, practice. So I think um, it's always good to begin with the practice. I think this is all what we all need the most. <clears throat> so just before I begin, that probably there is a lot of people who um, listening first time or not familiar in context of what we're trying to teach here. And so I wanted to just say a few words to introduce what we are trying to do here. And uh, so basically, um, as personally, I'm always interested to always engage reading, reflecting, and um, uh, ancient teachings and texts. So this is the called Shangju Nienju Kaju Koruji, one of the most important burn uh, Dzogchen teachings. And this is something that I have my wonders of the natural mind is based on, and um, this is something that uh, I, most of the time I kind of teach, practice, reflect from this, this book. So among this, uh, also we have taught a number of times something called 21 nails and 21 seals. <clears throat> These are also how the Dzogchen teachings are divided into like a chapters, 21 chapters or nails. And so among them, uh, the cha chapter 11, uh, the, uh, among 21 nails, chapter 11, uh, this is what, uh, uh, clearing the darkness. So it's a uh, chapter on clearing the darkness. And then uh, in this chapter, we are talking about basically four lamps, as you can see how, um, I have uh, put it up in uh, Facebook. Uh, this is uh, clearing the darkness. So uh, clearing the outer darkness, uh, clearing the inner darkness. Uh, so uh, different forms of darkness. So and so today we last time we talked about the the Jangja Chui Doma, the lamp of the eye, which clears the darkness of the environment, the dark, worldly darkness. So the, our eye sense, sense, sense organs, sense consciousness, uh, uh, clears the darkness of worldly darkness, the environment darkness. But also that we know all, but something I think we don't know is that this, the eye is also door to our soul, our pure consciousness, our pure self, our higher self, our uh, inner Buddha or three kayas. So whatever ways you wanted to call it, refer it, I is also source, which is kind of unique approach of this tradition. And today we are talking about the second land, um, the clear vision of sound, rays and light, or sound, light and rays. So the clear vision of sound, light, and rays. I just po posted some of the things, you know, like from the from the science approaches of the what sound means, what what the light means, what the waves means. Some YouTube's very interesting YouTube's I have posted to my Facebook. Uh, I hope that uh, you will watch and enjoy and see how some of these things. Um, crosses each other. The, some, some of these ancient wisdom traditions uh, crosses with the modern new discoveries or uh, approaches, understanding of sound, light, and waves, so how they're connected, and they, if there's any connection. I'm sure there's a connection, but it's a question about what we understand, how we can understand, uh, how we can make a bridge, how we can complement each other, what in the end of the day, what those connection will benefit our own evolution and transformation and and social greater social benefits, social changes. That's always the, the final question. So, and I hope there is a lot of that. 
So, so the second lamp, the clear vision of sound, light, and rays, or the sound, rays, and light, is the topic that we are going to talk this time. And it says in the teaching, according to according to Shang Jun Yeju, removes the view of nihilism. Okay, so this this notion of uh, overcoming a view of nihilism or eternalism, we say takta and cheta in Tibetan. So overcoming nihilis, nihilism or eternalism, uh, it's a very important philosophical argument. But I don't want it to go into so much here in terms of the philosophical argument, but I want it to be more a pr experiential, personal, practical uh, approaches of looking at these ancient wisdom traditions. So, and, and particularly this one here is not talking about eternalism, so I'm not going to talk about that. It's talking about it removes the view of nihilism. So what does that mean? In, in terms of the experiences. So this is what I'm going to talk. So I want to start with a short meditation today. Uh, uh, meditation will begin basically uh, our own experiences of our life. So in the teaching it's basically saying the, the clear vision of sound, light, rays uh, clears the view of nihilism, right? Clears the view of nihilism. How does this uh, pure vision of sound, light, rays clear the view of nihilism? In the, t in the Tibetan quotes, uh, if there's some Tibetans that are listening here, I will just read it. It says, Hlong tong nang wi dromai, tong ze loi min basel. Tong ze loi min basel. So, uh, clearing the point of view of nihilism. So how does that do? Um, because if, if you look in a many, uh, philosophical approaches, some uh, spiritual approaches, some some religious, different religious theories. There are certain, sometimes, some approaches are clearly more oriented toward nihilism, denial, uh, lack of uh, lack of awareness, uh, lack of understanding of the winds and energy, lack of uh, application of those practices of light. Uh, lack, lack of exos, uh, exercises and experiences of our own human experiences, such as our thoughts and emotions and senses. Mm, these things, these things and have not much places in, in the spiritual development or practices. But according to this ancient tradition, particularly like in Dzogchen, who we are, our own emotions and our own thoughts, our own feelings, our own even ideas, our own experiences, even our own worldly experiences, such as our own challenges, pains, they all have very, very important place in personal evolution development. So basically what it's saying is, there is nothing in this world, there's nothing in you, nothing all your experiences is something that not useful. They are all good and useful and so, there, so for example, your, your current challenges in your life, look at your current challenges in life, maybe there is nothing there out there than like, like a quantum physics theories, there is nothing out there than, than your projection. There is nothing inherently out there than, than your uh, brain processing these images and the stories is projected out there. So there's nothing out there. There is only uh, energy, pure energy, an infinite possibility uh, energy there. So we have created all those things. That means that means these are basically, according to this teaching, is saying sound, light, and rays. And I think maybe in a science talking about the, uh, the sound, lights, and waves, uh, not necessarily rays, but we have to see where they all fit in or not. Uh, but basically, there's nothing out there. So that means, uh, I'm always, a, this in, very interesting question is that the, even um, neuroscience or neuroscientists, people who do research on really, uh, through research, they're finding that nothing is out there. It's just a purely a simple, uh, pure potentiality and energy and the light and waves and electric signals 
and nothing out there. So in some sense, and it's, it applies the same thing to perception of self, that how you see yourself is also the same thing. There's nothing in here also than, than this pure sound, light and rays and pure energy and potentiality. So, so when the findings like that, does it change anything to neuroscientists or many or other quantum uh, physics scientists, people who do researches on that, does it really affect anything on a personal level, uh, evolution or personal level, awakening or personal level, transformations of one's own uh, conditions, conditions of ignorance and pain, does those science discovery affects anything? I think that's a big question. I think in principle, they should affect, like in these teachings, every whenever it's trying to say nothing is out there, it's, everything is project, projected. Every time we have some glimpse of that awakening, it awakens you, it changes you. So basically, it's very important that uh, it should, in, for the scientists, it should affect also. So now here, so, sound, light, and rays, either it happens in your sleep, or it happens in your dream, or it happens in your deep meditation, or it, it's happening in your hallucination, you know, like a, a, a very famous uh, uh, physician and scientist, Oliver Sacks, uh, uh, reports a lot of uh, visions on his patients about uh, seeing seeing things, so not necessarily it, like psychologically they are crazy or they have interaction with their visions, but they are just seeing as a pure images and pure lights, and uh, and particularly they are not seen by their eyes. So many, many times cases where they were blind and they are able to see it. When they are losing their hearing, they are able to hear sound. When they are losing their sight, they are able to see their visions. This they are able to see it without through their eye or ears. So there are these experiences are clearly there, very much there. I think I would, I would recommend uh, uh, to look at Oliver Sacks, some of his uh, reports on that. It's very, very interesting. So, uh, so let's go back to our self here. So our self here is what kind of sound, light, rays, visions you're experiencing. Particularly, what kind of challenges that you feel this moment. So I wanted to come down to your, your perception of the world t right now. So your challenge, your ch challenging situation with one individual, a group of people, with your boss, with your partner, your husband, wife, your brother, sister, your family, father, mother, child, and of course, all these challenges are much more stronger when it's personal, when it's close related, when we feel some kind of love and care. There's more pain, there's more, there's more love, there's more love, there's more pain, there's more challenges, there's more expectations. But these all experiences that we have in our close relationship with people, they are also clearly nothing else than simply your experience. You're experiencing what you're experiencing right now, but there is nothing called bad. No one is bad. No situation is bad. Even though you're thinking maybe, oh, well, you have no idea, right? You have no idea who I am dealing with. So there is no one there, bad person. There is no situation, it's bad. But it's clearly your experiences of that. Somehow, these sound, light and rays, as in the teaching calls it, or sound, light and waves, electric signals, reflection of lights bouncing back in your, uh, through your eye, through retina, t into the brain, brain processing, processing all these informations. Then, then big, big question is, when does ego 
gets in somewhere. When does this individual sense of I, sense of limited sense of self-perception gets into the brain? Does it get into the brain? Does that self-identity has anything influencing the brain? Of course, I think there is. Brain is the place where it's a processing. The eye is the place, is the door where you're able to see them project out like in a movie screen. Somebody is doing it. <clears throat> and in this teaching, we are talking about awakening of that someone. The smart ego. Recognition of that smart ego. That's what, the, what the, really the practice is about. So, so what I'm trying to say here right in this moment is, it's trying to make it very much come to, before we practice, I want to make sure that we understand what we are practicing, is that I am talking about myself this moment. I am talking of each one of you, your life, your experiences of your life this moment, and particularly area what you are facing, particularly challenges you are facing with people, situations, loved ones. I repeat again, there's no one is bad, nothing is bad, no situation is bad. <clears throat> there are like um, opportunities for your growth, opportunity to be nice to someone, opportunity to help someone. Maybe in some cases your last opportunity to grow, help, be kind, be nice to someone in some situation, to able to change some positively some situation if you have some, some sense of power to do that. These are like a doorway to liberation clearly a doorway to liberation. They are nothing bad. Your doorway to your own liberation and do doorway to a collective liberation. These are support of your path, spiritual development, your path. These are like, a, um, how you say, boosters, uh, supports for your spiritual development experiences. But but maybe you're not seeing any of those things like that as I'm describing. So that is the question. So does this vision of sound light rays or sound light waves or whatever you are experiencing, good, bad, neutral, personal challenges that you're experiencing, there's nothing like that there. So this is what we wanted to have a glimpse of shift, this is what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to achieve, after we all supporting each other, after we go deep inside with the blessing power of Salavya Mantra, listening or singing together, I want you to go deep inside yourself, a place deep enough, the self, there's more restfulness in your body, there's restfulness in your speech, there's restfulness in your mind, Maybe rest enough, you are deeply connected to your true essence, true being, to that light, to that awareness. You are able to there wear their glasses of wisdom and then re-look at again the situation. Maybe you will see light. Maybe you will see uh, infinite possibility. Maybe you will see a warmth. Maybe you will see they are door to liberation, they are support to your practice, they are the best thing ever you happen. This is the last, the maybe very special opportunity for you to have how you can change the situation into the best possible situation. Either it's an individual, collective, or even a bigger social, social level, it depends on your uh, function in the world, in the society. Maybe this is your real opportunity to change something in your community, in your family and so on, by resting. So this is what we are going to do. So just uh, rest uh, now. I want everybody to bring your attention inward. Breathe deep and exhale all your stale breath.
Take a few deep breathings. And then bring your attention to your body. From the sole of the feet till the crown. A presence of your awareness in your body. Feeling very still and grounded. Presence of your awareness in your speech, grounded deep in that s silence, feeling that silence, being in that silence, being aware of that silence. Being aware of your heart, your mind, by being open and by being grounded, centered in that openness in your heart and in your mind. We call it three door and we use it as an entryway to our true essence. And maybe you can focus all or just Pick one, whichever f you're more familiar with your body or your speech or your mind. Rest in one more deeper as we listen to the Salahuya Mantra and feel this power of this mantra, blessings of this mantra, the vibration of sound of this mantra, allowing you to be free and rest deep and connect deep to your own a true essence. Trust that. And also allow that whatever the experiences are rising from your stillness in your body, silence in your speech, spaciousness in your mind, uh, spontaneous joy, spontaneous love, spontaneous gratitude, spontaneous devotion, or tears in your eye, the exp expression of pure openness, whatever happen arising, allow, and also feel that we are all supporting each other. This moment we have, we have like over three hundred people together. This moment, we are all together as, as a cyber sangha. We are supporting each other, and also send feel like you are sending support to everybody. I am doing right now, and. Uh, I'm also feeling that I'm supported by all of you. Just feel that you also feel that too.
continuously rest deep through the stillness in your body. These connections are protection, healing, Rest deep in the silence and feel the silence. And rest deep in your unbounded space in your mind, consciousness, in your heart. where you're free from everything. Where you find the eyes of wisdom, the eyes of your heart to able to see the light in you and in others. The source of the light, sound, and rays, or the source of the sound, light, and waves, and source of what everything what you're perceiving, you're connecting to that place. You find eyes which are able to see through boundlessness. You find the eyes which are able to connect with full of lights. You see through the warmth, eyes of warmth of your heart. in this infinite possibility, space, light, sound, and waves. You're able to see what they are in their boundless pureness, the infinite possibility in their dynamic energies. Now gradually look at your own experiences of this moment in your life. Out of that light you have created a visions, images, stories, which is challenging you. Out of that sound, that voice, that speech, you have created a stories of pain speech, a difficult, challenging stories. So now, trying to see, can you, can you see from that space can you f see from that light? Can you feel from that warmth in your heart? Look at the person. If the person is the, the challenging vision, challenging appearance, any person, 
Or if the situation is challenging, so look at the situation. If your own, your perception of self is challenging, look at the same way. From that space, from that awareness, from that warmth. When you see from that space, boundless space, You're free, like these visions are. They can appear anything, any form, any shape, any time. You're free too. You can experience of them anything, like these visions are purely your opportunity, your door to liberation, your support of your practice, a path of your journey. Or oh, this person that you think is a threat, this person is the opportunity. Because there's infinite possibility way to see this person. Infinite possible way of connecting with this person, not one way, not pain way, not your pain way, not your way, infinite possible way. You're just not able to see it. You can allow things to happen in the situation without your expectation or maybe going beyond your expectation that you, there is something more in the situation that, that will evolve, that is good for the society, for the group, for the family, for you, which you don't see, you see through your own limited mind, pain mind. There is so much more way to love this person than through just expectations of you. You are able to see who this person is. You are able to see this person's pain. You are able to see this person's kindness. The, the inner beauty of this person that you are having challenged, you are able to see that if you look from that space awareness and warmth. So basically, these experiences of this situation in your life, either a situation or person, it is a vision. We call it vision your appearances to you. But you are, you are not seeing them from inside. You are not awakened in them. You are trapped in them, in their pain, stories, conflicts. So when you are awakened, when you are able to see from that space, from through that awareness, with that warmth in your heart, qualities of your heart, positive qualities of your heart, that's called insight. It's like a something awakens in your your perception of the reality. Your perception of the reality is not only influenced by your ignorance, your conditions, your weakness, your fear, your pain, your expectations. Your appearances, your visions are now, you're able to see them through that unbounded space, a pure awareness and the warmth 
When you do that, you awaken in your vision. That awakening clears the nihilism. This is what he's talking about here. The clear vision of sound, light, rays dissolves view of nihilism. So I hope this, this, this meditation, this explanation, this approach helps you something very ancient, something very connected with the modern science, becomes very much something very personal, approachable for personal awakening. And in this, through this, very particular experiences that you are having this moment in your life. So, so everything what we are talking, they are not just theory. You can apply on your personal experiences of this moment. I am sure some of you are really closely working with that that way and you are feeling the shift, you are feeling the change. So please Tell me how many of you felt this meditation that something clearly in your vision, in your appearances, perception of reality that you're experiencing in this particular situation has shifted. In a way, what you're seeing out there, nothing more than sound, light, sound, and waves. In the context of Shanyi teaching, they say they are like a pure dynamic energy of sound, light, and rays. That's what you're seeing. But you, of course you're not just seeing sound, light, and rays. You're seeing a person. You're seeing a, a close person. You're seeing a person, challenging person. You're seeing a difficult, mean person, somebody who hurt you, take advantage of you, you are seeing so many, your own stories projected out in these situations. And that what you are seeing is hurting you. But when you shift that whole thing by resting deep, and finding very deep place of that boundless space, infinite awareness and genuine warmth, when you are able to have <clears throat> look at from that place, you see completely situation changes. Situation becomes ch opportunity, becomes a door, becomes a support, becomes a friend, becomes an ornament. Every appearance becomes an ornament of that space. A display of that pure energy. So how do you see that? Do you see that way? Let's say this way a little bit. You know, like one thing, I think one thing, according to these beautiful ancient teachings of great perfection, one thing is a very, very simple thing, and I think it's a very simple thing, and I think it's a very important thing. It says, basically it says, let's say it says, one maka. One should not um, um, reject the appearances, the visions. One should not control the vision. You should not control your body. You should not control your speech. You should not control your mind. You should not control yourself. You should not control anyone. You should not even control a circumstances in a situation. You should not control your thought. You should not control your feelings. You should not even control your anger. 
You should not control whenever some deep experiences occurs during deep meditation, such, such as what we call deton savinyamsum, like the experiences of bliss or experiences of emptiness, experiences of clarity. You should not control anything. These appearances supposed meant to arise to benefit you. What you need to do is look at from different place with the eyes of wisdom. But not controlling the vision, but being aware of yourself and look at look at look at through that awakened self or awakened eye. So I think this is a very simple normal attitude is and and, and we have this really uh, human being as a human we have this very much one of the probably the weakest point of as a human being loving to control. Even in a spiritual dimensions the people who like some sense of position in a spiritual dimension, trying to control. In a political power, trying to control. Any sense of social power are a misuse and trying to control. Any sense of your own kind of energetic and your own mind controlling your beautiful experiences so any of your experiences are nothing wrong. They are sound, light and race. They are needed to be awakened. Then you don't fall into nihilism. But if you are not awakened, you deny, you control, you, you suppress, you avoid, you manipulate, you interpret differently or any interpretation, they are all a category of nihilism. You're denying something rather than experiencing it fully. Rather than it's supporting, your, uh, supporting you to fully awaken your sense of self. So that is, I think, what is talking about. And um, so then just give one, one sh short comment here. You know, if you look at the appearances, we say, Ne Su, Nang Su, Jin Dang, we say Tibetan, uh, the way things are. How, how the things are in the universe? They are simply a light, sound, waves, a pure dynamic energy in Dzogchen teachings we call Tsao. That's what it is. That's, that's what, how things are. But how you perceive, it's called Nang Su, how you perceive them. How you perceive them is limited by your body, your senses, sense organs. The human heart, human eye perceive one, the mouse heart, mouth uh, eyes may perceive different. Maybe the tiger's heart and tiger's eyes perceive differently. The circumstances, conditions, you perceive differently. And even human, not every human perceives same thing, even you're looking at the same thing. Perception changes. Even your own, as a neuroscience, some of the ex experiment they did, looking at the mountain, the height of the mountain, same person, same eyes, looking at the same mountain, but mountain is going higher and lower, depends on the weight that you are carrying, how, the, how heavy your bag is on your bag is on your back. So when you're carrying a heavier bag, then you look at the mountain, the mountain is, perception of the mountain is going higher. When you take out your weight, then you look at the mountain, perception or the mountain is height is going lower. So basically, the perception of the height of the mountain is changing based on your heaviness of sense of self. 
obviously there has so much to do with this perception of self. It's not the mountain. There are also more researches like in neuroscience that there is this the examples of their saying that when you are holding a stranger's hand, when you're holding the somebody you are in relationship with but not married to, then you're holding someone someone's hand who you are not only having a relationship but you are married with. The responses in the brain is completely three different things. So for sure, the anxiety level is a different. The sense of security is a different. With strangers, you don't feel that safe. With you having a new relationship, probably you don't feel very, very settled. But if somebody you think you are married to, you feel now you're finally, ah, finally I'm okay. But you know, it's in your mind. Nothing is okay, or everything is okay. From the point of view of that boundless view, everything is okay. From the point of view of limited self, nothing is okay. But this perception of things are changing based on your sense of, sense, sense of self-perception. So anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, uh, how it is, how you see, how you perceive, then maybe how you grasp them, how you grasp them. I love you, you grasp in the name of love. It's attachment, it's not really a love. In one moment to another moment, you, you are able to hate the same person in a second moment if something did not go in your way. That's not love. Love does not change that fast. Not that opposite, hating somebody. So how you grasp, how you create story out of your grasping mind. So many stories, so much stories that we have. Look at, look at ourselves, look at yourself. How much stories and it's taking so much space, beautiful open space away in your heart, in your brain, in your channels, in the field of energy. They're not flowing as best they can because they are blocked and taken space taken away by these stories. We know that. Not only these stories, but some of the stories may be okay, not too bad, but many stories producing a lot of pain. Now their pain comes. Then, it, it, then issues of health comes. Disease comes. Destructions comes. The wars comes. Right? So you think, think about, you know, our, like a, se a sense of all the wars in the First World War, Second World War. Millions and millions of people were killed. Millions and min millions and civilians were killed. Innocent people were killed. The environment is kind of polluted with those, those wars. Why it happened is a simply based on some human perceptions. Not individual level, on a collective level, someone has been threatened by some other groups. So as a result of that, the war start, the ultimate destructions of millions of people die. So where, how did we start it? We started what it is, how you see it, how you project it, how you create story, how you em get emotionally involved, how you create pain, how you create stories, how you get sick, how you die, how you create war. These all are in like a, a continuation chain of that uh, lack of connection and lack of awareness. Some point, somewhere, someone needed to be awakened 
uh, recognize and stop or, or trying to change the direction. So your own situation in this moment in your own life, whatever situation you your life, you don't want to go farther. Wherever you are, maybe you're already a lot of, you're far away. You don't want to create story. You don't want to create pain. You don't want to create conflict. You don't want to create separation. You don't want to get sick because of that. You don't want to die because of that. It's the moment to awake from your experiences, from your visions, from your stories. You can't do it. You need to rest more, connect more with your own three existence of your body, speech and mind. You will be able to do it. And many of these practices that I guide, you know, I don't guide too many different practices. I guide the same practices. And so I hope that you continuously focus on the practice which is so much more directly linked with you, your own essence, your own situations and your own liberations. So thank you very much. And um, so one last announcement here. And as you all know, I put a lot of my effort into this Facebook uh, live, Facebook live, and uh, especially when I'm traveling, and also my f family, uh, you know, they help me, they support me a lot, things to do when I'm doing from my house, and house needed to be quiet, everybody needed to go out, even though they don't have to go out, they have to go out, they have to go in their rooms, stay there in rooms, not make any noises. So everybody is <laughs> contributing in a different ways to this, this uh, Facebook Live, and also uh, we have a great Facebook Live team, a TWR Facebook Live team. They do a lot of work, helping a lot. And as a Lingmicha International, they, we are also trying to do a lot more, or more and more on LingmichaLearning.com. The a lot of things online, free things, uh, and and the workshops, and so uh, so, uh, so uh, some some paid things, and so on. So there's a lot of things that we're trying to do, and but we really need a good feedback from all of you. We want you to serve better, and in order to be, us to serve better, we need, need your feedback, your uh, honest uh, uh, feedback. So, so there is a survey that I think uh, Mariela is uh, posting uh, right now on the, uh, on the chat here, and so if you can please look at this uh, um, survey and trying to fill it up as soon as possible. We have also, and, and also, also I wanted to thank a lot of people who did fill it up uh, uh, in different languages. We have up to 12 languages that people have filled it up. So we appreciate very, very much your taking your, your precious time to filling up and helping us. So those you haven't done, and I would strongly recommend, please, please, please help us to help you and help others more and by filling up these surveys. And the uh, last thing is uh, next, uh, the Facebook Live, um, it will be April 4th, uh, same time, um, uh, one o'clock uh, New York time. So uh, April 4th and then after that, April 18th. So f April 4th and April 18th will be next to uh, uh, webcast, uh, last two uh, lamps. So uh, thank you very much. All my blessings, my love. Thank you, thank you.